Hello everybody, this is FHRC Brony, and today I am not making a tutorial video, uh, but today I'm going to be busy uh, for a few days from now. So um, my dad's friend is going to be asking us to help him fix his Toyota Sienna. Well, the car is not technically broken, he just needs uh, a scheduled maintenance on it, so I'm going to be doing a tune-up on this thing, so I'm going to be changing the spark plugs, and... Um, it's going to be fun because this is a transversely mounted V6 engine. So the ones over here are easy, but the ones back there, <laughs> that's quite a chore. And, um, uh, and a lot of Toyota owners of this particular car um, told me that you need to take the wipers out and the wiper clout, uh, cowl out. So in order for me to get access, easy access to the back because the other three spark plugs is hiding underneath the intake manifold. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And yeah, uh, at least the benefit is this engine is very similar in layout as that 3.0 that I worked on on that Highlander. So the engine layout is very similar. So the intake manifold sits on top of the uh, the back three spark plugs. The, in, uh, the air filter is sitting over here. So same area as the as that 3.0 I did. So, so yeah, it's gonna be a little bit of a chore to get to get underneath here, but the engine itself is, uh, the layout for it, it's exactly the same, if not very similar to the the 1MZ. If you guys are wondering what kind of engine model this is, this is a uh, 3MZ. So it's a 3.3 engine, whereas that 1MZ is a, is a 3.0, so. Same engine layout, but this one's a little bit bigger. So enough of me blabbing at you. Uh, like I said, this is not a tutorial. I'm just going to be making photo compilations on the fixing process. And then uh, after this, the tune-up, I'm going to jack the car up, hopefully on the next day, so I can replace the struts. Because the owner wants brand new front struts and new rear struts. So a lot of work on this car, but, you know, at least... The car at least will run like new All again. Right, so this is my first progress with the so far. Got the plastic out, but it's not. I'm not down to the main uh, part yet. So I got to take this wiper assembly out, which is held down by one, two, three, four bolts. And then once I'm done with that, there's a bolt right there. No one. And there's another one over a couple over there and so on and so forth i'll take i'll be able to take this uh clout out this cowl out so i can gain access to my to the intake manifold because i can't really go underneath there with my hand so yeah so and it's quite dirty i'm going to clean that up as well so once i get this wiper assembly on, i'm going to go grab the shop bag i just want to go ahead and show you guys something that's really awesome now normally you can use a, a regular socket ratchet and you know you can just take your bolts out. Uh, it's hard for me to do this with one hand but you, know, oops. But you can uh, do something like that. Which is fine and it works. Um, but I like this one better actually. Let me show you guys right now. So I took that bolt out with that ratchet right there. Then I got one of these. And watch this. Works like a regular ratchet, but that's one. It's gonna be hard for me to do this with one hand, but here's the other. Boom, a lot easier. Makes the job a whole lot easier and faster. So that will work, but if you have the extra money, I suggest get yourself one of these. All right, with the cowl removed, now I have more access at the garage door just open. Now I got access to the manifold now. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean up uh, the space here using a shop vac, and then it'll be on my way. Right, so the cowl is now removed, and I also take the Taking off the air filter and uh, right now, the air filter. 
more disgusting. I got a new one anyway, so. So those are removed. I also taken this one off. Now my next target is to take this throttle body out, which is held down by two brackets, I believe, and one bracket that's holding this manifold, or Toyota's term, this is actually called a plenum, but I'm still gonna call it a intake manifold because that's technically where the intake is at. So um, there's a bracket that's held that's held down with on this uh, manifold. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that out. I'm also gonna take this whole piece, this whole unit out, and then and then I'll be on my way. Oh boy, we are making progress right now. So it's kind of weird that the throttle body is actually in two pieces. This is the one that the gas pedal is connected to. And um, there's another one right over there, right over there, which is connected to here, to the manifold. And it's actually held down by two brackets, like I said. I don't know why that Toyota needs to put two brackets just to hold this thing down. Isn't one enough? And plus, there's nuts that's holding down this thing, so I don't really need it. So, but anyways, um, I'm gonna go ahead and remove those two bolts behind that manifold, and then hopefully I'll get uh, get to removing this manifold. Feels like I accomplished something. Here's the manifold now, or like I said, Toyota's uh, specific term is called a plenum. Like I said, I'm still gonna call this a manifold. I got the manifold finally out. Now I can finally access to those three spark plugs. Good thing, this is a coil on plug. What that means is, you take the spark, this whole assembly is a distributor, technically. Cars like my 4Runner has a uh, rotating uh, distributor. And uh, it actually has, it spins, and on the, on the tip of the spinning part of the distributor, there's actually a piece of metal that makes contact with the metal inside the distributor cap, which sends power to the spark plug. In this case, on cars like this, the newer ones, the coil on plug method uh, eliminates the distributor and distributor just is just this part right here. So it's a coil on plug system. A lot of new cars will have that. If you have an old car like my 4Runner, it will have a distributor. So anyways, um, plenum is out or manifold is out. This is what's holding it, the, this bracket, this stupid freaking bracket. And to make matters worse, that 14 millimeter bolt that was connected to is being blocked off by this stupid hose. I have no idea why, what Toyota was thinking, but I mean, Toyota engines are great. I really love the reliability, but sometimes it's like, something so simple can be so difficult to take out. So anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and change those spark plugs out. And wow, I felt like I accomplished something. And I also got some new gaskets for this, so I'm gonna go ahead and install that. Uh, these are NGK Iridiums. And uh, I'm actually, when it comes to Japanese cars, I'm using either Denso or NGK. In this case, it's NGK. And uh, Iridium spark plugs, like this one, is the same. Uh, these were also installed on my 4Runner. Um, not particularly this model Iridium spark plug, but um, it has the um, same, same brand, same iridium spark plug, but it's probably a different model. And um, I want to show you how spark plugs work just real quick. What it does is, hence the, its name, spark plug, it produces the spark inside the inside the engine. So cars like most of the cars that are built today are four-stroke engines. So it has four stages in engine operation. So basically the first stage is intake, so air comes in from the from the outside elements, it goes through the throttle body into this intake manifold, then it goes through here into the combustion chamber, and the piston goes down. Then once the piston starts to go up, it starts to create compression. And then once um, the fuel starts to go into the engine and sprays into the combustion chamber via the via fuel injectors if you have a fuel injected car once that fuel is sprayed into the combustion chamber then the third stage will will come in will come into play and that's when the spark happens so once the gasoline starts entering the chamber then this will start to fire up via via injectors and um, and also the distributor and the computerized coil on plug if you have a newer car 
Once the computer sees the gas coming in, coming in, it will send the computer and say, time to give it spark. This will start to spark up and then it will start the, um, the burning of the fuel and thus forcing the piston down, giving the power that the engine needs. And then after that, uh, that fuel comes out into the exhaust and that's your final stage. So basically the first stage, intake, then the piston goes down and creates compression. Then the piston starts to go up. Then the fuel injector starts spraying gas into the engine. And then this starts to kick in, the spark starts to spark up, then burn the gas, bring the piston down, and giving its power, the third stage, and then the final stage is exhaust, giving all that fuel, all that dead gas out into the exhaust. So I hope that, hope that explains it simply as much as I can for you guys. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the old spark plugs and put the new ones in. So once again, these are NGK Iridium spark plugs and I use Iridium spark plugs, NGK or Denso on Japanese cars. On my 4Runner it had AC Delcos uh, prior to changing the spark plugs in that and now I change it to Iridiums from NGK. Anyways, I'm going to go ahead and continue on. Much to my surprise, this was also using Iridium spark plugs as well. This is a Denso. This is the one that came in that it came out of the car. As you can see, if probably you can't see it. There you go. There you go, Denzo. Here's the NGK. And here's the comparison between the two. Alright, so this is the old gasket that came out of the manifold of that Sienna. Here's a new one. This is from Felpro. I'm gonna go ahead and put it on that black manifold that you that I removed earlier. So Alright, Here so here's the new spark plugs, up oh, spark plugs, <laughs> um, intake manifold gasket, and I'm going to go ahead and put this onto the car, and uh, I'm going to try to do my very best on putting that 14 millimeter bolt back in there, but once I do get it in, I all I need to do is lift the car back up again, and uh, grab that other 14 millimeter bolt and, you know, tighten it up, put the throttle body back on to that, on those two brackets, and then put the air filter back on, and then I can work on the front spark plugs. I'll be honest with you, I'm gonna go a little bit of an rant mode at the moment. So uh, I'm sorry if I kind of do sound angry and uh, want to swear. But part of my my uh, my cussing, but whoever designed this engine is a fucking jackass. Like literally, who who will put who would put a freaking bolt that's almost inaccessible right between the firewall I'm, I'm talking about a bracket that's hold this anyways how do i say this this bracket that's holding this manifold is connected to the engine block that in itself is okay but why would why would anybody in their right mind specifically these toyota engineers put the bolt on the bracket where the manifold is connected to right in between the firewall where you can almost not get into just keep in mind, there's a freaking pipeline that goes over that bolt. Whoever, okay, I don't know who, what Toyota engineers, I don't know their, their names or anything like that, but whoever made this engine is a fucking jackass, at least in this car, okay? At least in this car, because I never worked on this engine. I mean, I kind of said I never worked on this particular engine specifically, but uh, this engine is very similar to that 1MZ FE. This is a 3MZ. So same engine, but this one's a little bit bigger. But really, honestly, come on, Toyota engineers. I mean, I love your engines. I really do. I love your cars. But god damn, why does it have to be so freaking hard just to get get that one simple bolt out? But aside from that, it's rent mode off. This thing is back in place. This is not going anywhere. So I'm glad that that. I don't know how long how long that took me. That took me almost an hour or two just to figure out how to get it in. So anyways, this is not going anywhere. I'm just going to put these uh, last two nuts in there. And then I'll reconnect the throttle body, put the vacuum hoses back on, and then I'll work on these other three spark plugs. So sorry for my little rant. Sorry sorry for cussing for, at you guys. I'm normally not like this. But uh, I'm just letting you guys know that as much as I love Toyotas in general, it's just... Yeah, I don't know. This is quite challenging for me, but you know, I sucked it up, and uh, we are making progress though, at least. So, uh, anyways, rent mode off. Time to install the throttle body, and then I can go ahead and work on this front. Okay. So.
so the throttle body is now installed. So that ain't going anywhere at all. Uh, all the bolts are in there. Um, it'll screw up over there. I over torqued it and then broke. But um, nah, it's not going anywhere. But um, the vacuum hoses are back in. Everything else is back in. Manifold's back in. The new spark plugs on this side is back in. Um, I'm now just going to put this part in where all the vacuum lines are and then I'll put the new filter on, which is right over here. And there's the new filter. I'm going to go ahead and put it in there and then put this assembly back together and then I can go finally work on these other three spark plugs. Okay, so um, I did some more vacuuming on the engine bay a little bit because it was covered in leaves. So I um, got the, manif uh, the manifold back installed already. I got the throttle body back on. I got this piece already here and I got the new filter in here. So everything is brand new. Oh, I almost forgot. I also need to, uh, where's the rest? Aha, there they are. Forgot to put these on. This is the yellow. Right there. this one as well okay there we go so those are on now so yay um, I got the manifold back on I got the throttle body back on this is back on the air, new air filters in there and uh, what else I also clean up this side so I guess pretty much is do these spark plugs and uh, <laughs> And then I call the night, and then the next day I'm going to be working on the suspension. So, yep. Yeah. It's going to be exciting, folks. So, <laughs> so the tune-up is almost done. So I'm going to replace the last three spark plugs and call okay. it. Okay. Um, this is going to be end of day one for the, or at least part one, of the Toyota Sienna. This is a 2006 Toyota Sienna. Uh, it's the one with the... 3MZ uh, FE, which is a 3.3 liter V6, variable valve timing, that's what the VVT stands for. And um, new spark plugs are installed. The rear ones were hard as hell to get into, but I was able to get it in there. Um, I took, the man took that manifold out, or a plenum, what Toyota uh, calls it. The bracket behind it is the hardest part but I was able to get it in there and now it's no longer moving anywhere. As you can see, as I'm shaking it, it's not moving anywhere. Throttle body is now reinstalled. The air filter is now, a new air filter is in there. Um, I also cleaned up the engine cover, cleaned up a little bit of some dirty stuff. That's why it looks a little bit better than before. So rear spark plugs changed. Also the front spark plugs under this cover has also been changed. So. New spark plugs, new iridium spark plugs are in there. Now, tomorrow, I'm gonna be going ahead and lift up the car and uh, change the suspension. Um, AutoZone's gonna have the new struts, the front struts coming in tomorrow. So, new front struts and also rear struts are, the rear struts are right over there. I'm riding this spaghetti. Uh, the rear struts are, are over there. I'm gonna go into that. And then after new suspension, I'm gonna do an oil change, transmission fluid change, and um, uh, coolant flush. So once all of that's done, the car's ready to get, be given back to the owner. And um, but first we're gonna, I'm gonna take it out for a little test drive. But uh, yeah. So far, my thoughts on, on working on this engine, it's quite hard for on a minivan like this one. This a Sienna is a is a van. Since I have to take out the the wiper wiper uh, cowl out. However, if this was on a Highlander or I believe the Solara had this one in the Camry uh, from this model year range, it's not so bad to be honest with you. I, yeah, I did rant and rave about the bracket behind there. That's the only hard part about it. Uh, aside from that, it's not too bad. Really, it isn't. To do a spark plug change or a valve cover gasket change, it, it's okay. It's not the, it's not 
the hardest, but it's it's kind of challenging. So I was up for the challenge. Uh, I was able to finish it up. The car is great. Um, I don't hate the Sienna. I'm not a but I'm not a big fan of minivans personally. I prefer SUVs. That's why I have a Forerunner. But uh, Sienna's are really good. I'll be honest with you. They they drive pretty. I rode in, I rode in a Sienna before. Not this one, but another Sienna before. And it's it's a really good car to be honest. Uh, and I know this engine is also really good and pretty powerful for a car this big. So, um, anyways, so new spark plugs have been changed to Iridium from NGK. Um, I cleaned it up a little bit. And tomorrow, new new uh, struts in the front, new struts on the rear. And we're going to be doing a, a fluid flush, coolant, oil, and a transmission. So, hope to guys see you tomorrow. And I'll talk to you guys again soon.